me and today you can see 1.5 is out so yes I would love to update Minecraft to 1.5 it's been in my opinion there's been a lot of stuff added but it's not been enough for the time that it's taken I mean don't get me started on that I understand how long it takes and how hard it is to program this stuff but you know it's not I don't, I, that's just my opinion anyways Today, once we get started and go ahead into the world here, I think I'm going to do some stuff. This is literally, as you saw, I have not been into 1.5. I never uploaded the snapshots or whatever because it can get a little finicky with me for some reason with the snapshots. I don't know why. It seems like other people have that problem too. But anyways, if it ever decides to start here, we can sort of be like the virtual unpackaging of 1.5. And now... Ah, uh, it's just not the same. It's just not the same. If you look, let's go into multiplayer here. All these servers are, man, 1.4.7. Oh, dear. <laughs> okay. Single player, we can go into that one. I don't know why I named it that. Well, I do, but I can explain later. All right, guys. So what we are looking at here in 1.5 is... Hoppers and hoppers can work not only as an item gatherer, but also as pipes Now if you're familiar with tech it, there's a lot of build craft and industrial craft and the pneumatic tubes from red power These are sort of that idea that were that are implemented in vanilla minecraft and they can act actually like filter pipes and they can act like regular pipes and by ways of if you right click them, they have this interface in here. But that's not what we're going to be talking about today. What we're going to be talking about is how to make hoppers, how to control hoppers, and how fast they push or pull the items along through the pipes. Because unlike in build craft pipes or whatever, you can actually control the speed quite easily by redstone. Now, we can demonstrate this. This is the hopper item in your inventory. I know it's really weird looking. That's my. Yeah, that's my thing. But if you put it down, and then you know whatever, we can put a bunch of these along. We can, if you shift click on the side, it'll point that way, and we can definitely. Um, and they should actually just end up in that if we don't do anything. They go down pretty fast. Two one zero nine eight seven six five four. So we can take those obviously, and then they end up in the last one. But if you actually apply redstone power to it by means of simply like that or with the repeater, either one, it really doesn't make a difference at all, then um, it won't go. It basically depowers it. And so if we go ahead and put this back down again and we put the items on, it basically turns it off. It keeps it from pushing the items. And so obviously... The thing you can do with that is toggle it on and off, but what you can do is add a redstone clock. And if you're not familiar with this, it's basically a circular part. This is the actual clock part right here. It's a circular pulse of redstone going around infinitely in a circle. And so what you can do is if you apply different... I just added them in like a wave pattern just for fun, but it really doesn't matter if it's like that at all or not. I just It just looks cool. You can pulse it for however long you want, which you can control with different devices, such as this one here. Now, if we fly... My goodness, I'm going to get lost through all my mazes of stuff here. My goodness. My goodness, lots of stuff. Then... Oh, I just have one. Okay, whatever. That was an unnecessarily unnecessary flight but this is a mono stable circuit and so basically you control it by the length of the repeaters here you can put more than one repeaters you can put infinitely many but if you press it it can give a controllable pulse onto that torch and so if we just go ahead and fly all the way back there because I was decided just to fly all the way over there for nothing go all the way back over here I'm sort of giving you a tour here um, <laughs> but that was unintentional. You can attach it so that you can pulse it really quick onto the clock if you just attach it right here. And that way you can pulse, you can start up the clock however short or long you want. So, 
putting or showing this in action, these will all head down to that chest there. So you can see it's going, and if we actually go ahead and pulse it for a, let's give ourselves a redstone torch, because we want to give it a nice long pulse. We'll pulse it like that. Oh dear. What did I do? What did I do? Oh! I broke that there. I was like, what did I do? Alright, that. And then I'll pulse. And you can see it is... Oh dear. That's not what I meant to do. Oh well. It's going in here slower. Five, six, seven, you know. It's going in there a lot slower. So, here we gotta put more in there. It's going in there a lot slower, so it's obviously controllable. So that is all I really wanted to show you. That is how to control how fast they get to a place. So say you wanted to delay, you can put like a bunch of these, just like in zigzag patterns all the way around. And it can take like a minute, or you can obviously just control this here. So it can be on for a minute, and then after, if there's a clock that lasts for one minute, and then it'll turn off, and it can go. So you can completely control the time of items you want. So I just wanted to throw that out there. So this monostable circuit, you can make it pulse really, really quickly. So it only decreases the time by just a little bit. Or you can obviously make make a longer pulse or whatever. So that is entirely up to you. So I just wanted to share that little feature with you guys. Uh, thanks so much for watching. And